Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Welcome back to another Friday live session at 3 o'clock. I'm going to let a few questions uh, roll in, maybe address some of the ones that I missed last week, and uh, we'll talk, well, I'll answer questions for about 30 minutes or so, and then we'll call it a week. You know, they're starting to flow in. But before they start, yeah, they're coming quick. Before they get going over there, let me jump back to a couple that I couldn't get to last week. I've got one from Keith. It says, hey, John, I have a YFZ450. It will only start if it's in neutral. I can't start it in gear when the clutch is engaged. Is there any way I can change this? Well, it should start, be able to be started up as long as you're pulling in the clutch. I wonder if you've got it adjusted correctly and maybe it's putting too much drag on the, uh, the starter itself, not letting it fire off. So I would say check your, your clutch adjust, adjustment because you should be able to do that. Boy, um, <laughs> I couldn't spend too, many, too much time on the, uh, the questions I missed last week because they're starting to roll in here. Jason, you, you, sh you should be careful with your information that you have. Um, you've got inside information, shouldn't share that. Anthony, John, I have a 2006 Yamaha Grizzly 660. I'm working on the thermal fuse burnt out for the cooling fan. Can I use a resettable circuit breaker or a standard fuse in its place? I hate the OEM design. Well, th the reason being they uh, went with the thermal fuse is it, it can put up with more duration at, at its limit. And if you put in just a regular fuse, um, there, there's what they call a fast blow, and it's just gonna pop it immediately when it may get a, a uh, amperage spike. Um, as far as using a resettable circuit breaker, it's going to trip the same way. You'll just spend a lot of time under there having to reset it. I mean, Yamaha came up with that design for a reason. Um, I'm curious why you hate the OEM, OEM design so bad, but I would go back you know, with what it was designed to have. I mean, if it's constantly tripping it, that makes me think that the cooling fan motor probably has a problem. So you probably need to do an amperage test on it, uh, get you a, a, a volt -ohm meter that can handle a higher current put it in series on the positive side and see how much current it is drawing. It may be time to replace that, that, uh, that particular motor because um, just trying to do a workaround with different fuses or a circuit breaker, and that's not going to solve the problem and can potentially damage your unit by either the fan not operating at all or worse than that, actually damaging your wiring harness. I don't think you want to go through the pain to replace one of those. All right, David's asking me, hey, John, I have a 19 YFC450R. I have an HMF exhaust with a HMF tuner, okay? I was wondering if you knew somewhere I can get a map to put in it because the one, because it has that one that you manually change. There are several out there. Um, I would say hit one of the forums because a lot of people, uh, they'll have, uh, I call them canned maps for your particular setup and just go ahead and plug and play. Now you may have to tweak it a little bit later afterwards to really get it to um, fit your riding style, but um, certainly there should be a, uh, just a canned map that can accommodate both the, uh, the HMF exhaust and the tuner. <clears throat> All right, Nick is asking me, hi John, I finally got my four wheeler to the Honda dealership. Had a, long, had a lot wrong with it other than the battery issue. Well, Nick, now I'm curious. What was its problem and what all did they find? All right. Gareth is back. Glad you're, glad you're joining us again. And uh, we had a great Christmas and New Year's was fun as well. Brandon's asking me, hi John, I have an O2 400EX. Should I change the jets in my car from stock? I have a uniform, uniform filter, no box lid, and a Lex slip-on. Well, you just don't want to just shoot in the dark. Chances are you probably do need to rejet it. Um, what you need to do is at least do a read on the spark plug to see if it's running too rich or too lean and then adjust it from there. But with the changes that you've made, yeah, you're probably going to need to send it a little bit more fuel so it doesn't lean out. Travis is asking me, what would make my 2004 CBR1000RR not get spark? There's a multitude of things that can go on there. Um, there could be something that's inhibiting it from starting, maybe, maybe something as simple as the uh, side sand switch, or uh, it could be the actual CDI itself. I mean, there's a whole 
a whole list of things that you need to go through when you're trying to figure out why you know, a machine won't, won't fire off. Uh, I went through a um, series of videos on a uh, 600 where I can give you some things to look for. So if you would look at the playlist for that CBR 600 RR from Honda that uh, we worked on a couple of years ago, and I'm pretty sure we went through a no start condition on it. Maybe, maybe that'll guide you in the right direction. All right, Alonzo is asking me, I have a 2002 Yamaha Grizzly 660 and it keeps not getting fuel in the petcock. I cleaned it and it's still doing the same thing. So you're telling me fuel's not actually going out of the tank. A couple of things you can check. Um, one, there should be a, um, a filter, or just a screen filter on the, attached to this petcock itself. So you probably need to take a look at that and make sure it's not gummed up. And another one that uh, it will starve a carburetor is that if the vent valve or the vent tube for the top of the tank, if that's stopped up, well, it won't let the tank actually replace where the fuel is leaving with air, and that'll cause it to um, not deliver any fuel. So check those two things. Gilberto is asking me, hey, John, I have a 2007 YFC 450. I just put a bigger... Hot cam stage three in it, and my temperature is rising. The, the rising so much you can roast it. Okay, well, it sounds like you're running a little too lean. Then um, do a spark plug read, as I mentioned a few moments ago, and see if that is the case. Because if it's leaning out, that's going to make the engine run way too warm, and uh, eventually will melt it down. So do a plug read and you're wanting to see like a light brown on the ceramic and then black almost brown on the out, outer edge of the spark plug itself at the edge of the threads. But yeah, when you make those kind of changes, uh, she's going to breathe differently so you have to adjust your fuel. Vader is asking me, hi, I'm from Norway. Is the shipping expensive overseas? Well, it, it kind of depends, and I'm betting that our, our guys down in Florida can uh, send you a message to give you an idea of as far as uh, a weight would be, how much it would um, cost to ship to Norway. So guys, if you would, get in touch with Vidar and see if you can help him out. All right, Frankie is asking me, uh, why would engine die after letting, go, letting off the throttle on a 2001 FZ1? Well, I would wonder if your throttle stop uh, on your plates um, is, has been adjusted and it's just letting it go all the way shut. So uh, I would say check that, make sure that that screw's adjusted correctly. James is asking me, I've got a 2005 YFC 450. Bunch, bunch of uh, 450 questions today. Any way to tell if the cases were drilled for the oil mod without tearing it apart? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, you pretty much have to get down there to really, really see. Um, there are telltale signs. Usually if you can tell if an engine's been pulled apart, it'll have marks on either the, uh, any of your Phillips head screws or I think it's mostly eight millimeter heads, but you can, you can tell if, uh, if a um, ratchet's been on there. So take a look at the bolts to see if it's been opened up. Now, does that tell you whether or not they modified it on the inside for, as far as the oil passageway? No, but I'll tell you if the engine's been opened up at all, and that's typically what people would do, uh, the main reason they would uh, open them up. All right, Mad is asking me, I'm going to buy a TRX 400. How do I know if the quad is good? Well, I believe we did a what to look for as far as buying a used unit. Uh, uh, we did a video of it. If you would, um, check our YouTube channel and search that one out. And I go through what you should be looking for when you're um, considering buying one. Um, but as far as the, uh, the TRX 400 in general, it, it's a good machine and those things are bulletproof. Um, personally, I would go for one that has not been modified if you could find it, because a lot of people modify them you know, almost immediately. But the close, my rule of thumb is the closer to stock that you can find one, that's gonna be the, the most stable format to start building off of. Plus it's kind of fun. <clears throat> that coal miner is asking me, I have an 04 YFC 450, another one, and had a new key ignition put on it, and now my key is backwards. It is off, and it is on what's 
when I take out and it's straightening the battery, any idea what to look for? Man, that is bizarre. Uh, I, I guess it could have been assembled incorrectly to where the contacts are 180 out. Um, was it an OEM key switch or was this aftermarket? At any rate, I'd go ahead and replace that one. <laughs> First time I've heard that. <clears throat> Uh, Drew has asked me, hey man, it's been a year since I received my part. Oh man, parts always fast. Well, I think you're telling me that you've had your parts, uh, you get your parts fast and good. <laughs> and we're all about 450Rs and uh, 450 or 400EXs today. Um, Ad14Z is asking me, hey John, I have a 2001 TRX400EX and that's having problems turning on. I put the new spark plug, oil and gas, and I'm sure if it had something to do with the stator, what do you recommend I do? Well, I know that we did a no start condition on the uh, that particular make and model. Just start with the basics. I mean, we need to find out if it's getting spark, if it's getting fuel, and then last but not least, is there enough compression to make that make that uh, air fuel ratio explode? So just go to the basics and just start eliminating possibilities. Okay, Nick responded back. Well, it needed a new wiring harness, starter solenoid, fan was wired up to high beams from, oh boy, from previous owner. Good grief. <laughs> and something with the electric shift, new front uh, wires, and the, uh, the ball steering thing. Boy, yours did have a lot of trouble. Well, I'm glad that they were able to uh, attack it and get it taken care of. Happy birthday, FWMRE. M-E-R-E, -E. for Mary. Hmm. Nick says, I, I have a list, but there's too much to type. I understand. Alonzo, well, you're welcome. Hi, John, I have an 03 400EX. How, do, how would I know it's running hot? I typically use a, uh, um, one of those infrared heat guns, and you can just point it directly at the, you know, the cylinder and the head and just make sure it's within tolerance. I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have you know, 250 degrees or something like that. I mean, it is an air-cooled machine, and that, that should be around the 180 mark, I would think. Marcy has asked me, I have a Kawasaki Prairie, no reverse. Is there any way to figure out what, what the cause is about pulling the motor? All right, I believe there's an actual switch that you have to turn when you're trying to engage uh, reverse before you can actually in engage it, if I'm thinking of the right machine. Um, may want to take a look at that, make sure that that switch has not been damaged or disconnected. <clears throat> All right, Cardress asked me, what wiring issue would cause a 250cc go-kart motor, that's new, not to rev up? I would be surprised if it was a wiring issue on something like that. Now, I, I, plus, I have no idea what cart you're talking about. Carter, can you give me some more information on that? Young Flight 270 is asking me, the threads on my old drain plug is stripped out. Is there a solution besides buying a new case? Also, do you guys sell fully built motors? If so, where can I get a quote? I'm afraid we don't actually sell motors already assembled, but there's several companies out there that do. Now to your oil drain stripped out plug. I've done this before. There is a company called TimeCert, and they make replacement threads, and that is a fantastic um, system that they have, and they make them specifically for oil drain bolts because I mean, it happens. People over torque them and put them in there sideways, and that aluminum, it just strips them right out. So take a look at their lineup and see if they make one for your particular make and model. Once again, the name of the company is Time Cert, T-I-M-E-S-E-R-T. -E -E Good stuff. Boogie Man is asking me, hey John, how are you doing? What is your personal quad of choice? I'm doing great. Uh, it's, it's, I'm looking forward to uh, 2021 and see what all it brings. What's my personal quad of choice? Well, my, the one that I still own right now is actually a uh, Honda Rancher 350, a 2003. But probably my favorite machine was a 400EX. I owned one of those for several years, 
But as they say, with age comes a cage. Uh, I sold it and moved over to a uh, razor for a while, a couple of different razors, and now um, eyeing a uh, YX Z1000R. Like the shift. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. all right, y'all got what to look for with an ATV. Hello, Mr. John. I have an O1 Raptor 660 with hard starting, even if the quad is warmed up, is having backfiring through the carburetor and it throws off the intake boots. Woo! Well, need to go take a look at your valve adjustment because it sounds like it is way too tight and it's actually blowing back through the, uh, the intake valve. So take a look at those valve adjustments, make sure they're in line. Sounds like they're too tight to me. Emiliano is asking me, are spacers for uh, a quad a good idea? What are you really trying to accomplish? You're just trying to get a wider footprint to where it's more you know, stable? It's okay to do that, but the trick is you're actually changing your steering geometry a little bit you know, on the front. But as long as you don't get carried away, if you're going like uh, three quarters on either side, I think you should be fine. <clears throat> Chump is saying, best sight, hands down. Got my parts in three days, all OEM. That's what we do. Good to hear it. <clears throat> The coal miner came back and he says, uh, it's an OEM switch. It's just annoying because when I want to ride, I have to jump the battery also. What's the difference between the uh, in intake valves? I saw that there are three and one has a different part number. Hmm. I think one of them is a little bit, um, it's not as long as the other, just because the way it's uh, configured in the head, more than likely. It, but yeah, having to jump your battery, I have to jump it every single time. I mean, eventually it's going to destroy it, leaving on all the time. So, yeah, we need to get that switch out and get you another one. All right. Joseph is asking me, should I get a bigger carb for the motorcycle? I had a big bore kit from 115 to 160. I felt no difference in power when I rode the motor. I've changed the spark plug and new oil too with OEM specs. That, that is a huge displacement difference. Um, you're talking about 45 cc's larger, and you may have to look at you know, increasing the, uh, the car on it to get it uh, the, enough fuel to actually run effectively. What do we have here? <clears throat> hey man, I have this 1967 Honda 4980. All right, Drew, I'm not sure what your, your maker model is there, and uh, yeah, smacking it with a hammer or, or replacing the alternator, probably neither one of those are going to take care of it. <laughs> All right, Marcos asked me, what is your general opinion about a Yamaha TDM 850, 1993, and what's their common issue? Thanks. Marco, you've hit a, a model that I'm not familiar with. A, a TDM 850. Uh, I'll have to go back and research that one because that does not ring a bell for me. Patriots ask me why would my 2003 300EX stall out after warming up a bit? Well, when you say stall out, you're saying you're coming off the throttle and it just you know, dies. Check your uh, throttle stop plate adjustment and make sure it's not set too low. That'd be the first thing I would look at. Start with the simple stuff. Uh, the coal miners asked me, do you think sport quads will make, uh, make a comeback? I didn't realize they ever left. I mean, uh, you've got a certain segment that just loves the, uh, the sport side of things. Not everybody rides around in a side-by-side. Uh, a -side. There are some people that really enjoy riding still that have better and younger backs than I do. Cooper's asked me, is a 2000 Honda Rancher uh, ES a good ATV? Absolutely. I own a 03, which is basically the same as a, a 2000. So absolutely, it's, it's a good unit. Nick was saying, mine's the TRX 350TE, so which rear wheel drive? Okay, well, I can't remember where we were heading with that conversation, but I'll go back and look at it. 
All right, looks like I've caught up with the board, so now I'm going to switch back over to... Up, oh, up, oh, I'm getting some inside information here. Yeah, the Yamaha T... My guys are fast down in Florida. The Yamaha TDM 850, that's a sport adventure bike for the most part. Kind of looks... Parallel twin motorcycle is heralded as, as the modern sport type bike. Well, it's the first time I've ever even seen one. So I, I would be, I would hazard to guess if Yamaha produced, as, produced it, it's going to be a good machine. So if that is your cup of tea, then by all means, go with it. All right. I'm going to head back over to a couple of questions from last week. <clears throat> All right, Keith is asking me. No, that's actually Matt. My wife has an 09 TRX 250 recon. It was running fine one day, and the next day I went back out to the shop, and all it does is crank. It's getting spark and fuel. I'm stumped. Is any ideas? Check your uh, kill switch. You're not the first person to get caught on something like that. So check your kill switch. Make sure it's in that center position. <laughs> All right, Dan asked me, any idea while bleeding the front brakes, it will be filling the rear reservoir and overflowing on an 05 player scrambler? Yes, I can understand why it's doing that um, because your actual front and rear brakes are somewhat connected. Uh, the, the, uh, the actual plumbing in there is uh, connected from one end to the other. And I'm fairly certain there's a check valve involved that has evidently failed. So we need to run that down and get it replaced and then re-bleed it because it's actually forcing fluid in the wrong direction. And that's what you don't want. All right, Joe Jose is asking me, what do you recommend doing if the fuse keeps going out when turning on the quad and having it run for a bit? I've replaced like three already. Well, that's your electrical system uh, screaming for help because obviously it's exceeding what the, uh, the amperage is on that particular fuse. Now, you want to make sure you've got the correct fuse size in there. And then, let's say if it's a 10 amp and you're just, they just keep blowing one after another, well, we need to run down what the problem is and not just keep replacing fuses because that's going to do more damage to potentially your wiring harness. So... Time to start isolating whichever fuse uh, what, or whatever loads that are attached to that fuse and then start isolating each one, whether it be a fan mode or a headlight or a, a taillight switch. I mean, there's just no telling. And uh, isolating those out until you find out what, which one is causing it to uh, overload the circuit and then uh, blow that fuse. Right, Oregon had to ask me, I went to my local Yamaha dealer to find for a filter and oil. He mentioned to warm it up for checking the oil. This doesn't make sense to me. Any motor I've changed oil, you want it cold so the oil is in the crankcase. Well, it depends on which make and model you have. I mean, if you've got a dry sump system, it has to be run for X amount of time to get it flowing through the different cha chambers and the reservoirs. Then you let it sit for X amount of time, and at that point, you can go ahead and get an accurate fill on it. Uh, I've seen many mechanics overfill, especially a Polaris, something like a, a Razor, because they, they thought it was empty when, in fact, it just needed to be run for a minute to check it correctly. So, And as far as changing it when it's warmer, when you heat up the oil, it flows better, and it, you get more out of it if it's actually warm instead of just trying to drain it when it's cold because the viscosity is so... Um, like gelatin. <laughs> it doesn't work out very well. All right. We got a couple more questions that we can go through. Oh, uh, the coal miner said, uh, I meant like Honda, Kawasaki, and Suzuki getting back in the game of making sport quads and not just Yamaha. Yeah, I, I've often wondered that, but I'm not in charge of uh, whatever study group that they had. I'm really surprised that Honda hadn't got back into it because that 450, <coughs> the 450ER was a really fun machine. But evidently the bean counter says, well, there isn't enough of demand out there, so they're just basically giving the, par the market to Yamaha, and I don't think they mind. Or I wouldn't. <laughs> 
All right, Tyler is saying, uh, keep getting water in the display screen on my 2019 Honda 420 Rancher after I take it underwater. Is there any way to prevent this? Yeah, if you're running in that deep water, and I'm sure you've got it snorkeled, um, they make the silicone type electrical sealant that you'll need to put on the backside of your plugs and basically on the seam of any uh, piece of electronics like that just to try to seal the water out. I mean, that's, it's just going to be a painstaking process to, uh, to get that sealed up. But I would look at the, where the wires plug into the back and this, this, uh, the silicone that I'm talking about. It's not like silicone, but it's made to seal up electronics. You actually put it down into the connection and then, make your, then re, uh, reattach the connector, and that really seals it up. Kind of hard, kind of hard and messy to work with, but um, if you're going to run one underwater, you, you have to go through that process. All right, Colorado is asking me. I have an 03 Rancher 4x4 ES. Has intermittent shifting problems usually when down shifting? Shift motor is replaced with no change. I'm curious what oil that you may be using and the amount of miles on it. It may be time to go away from the regular GN4 and go with a, a semi-synthetic um, Yamaha. I mean, Honda has a great one. Um, it's the HP4, and it's in, in the gold bottle. Um, so give that a shot. Maybe uh, make it easier for it to shift with, the, with that dip, with that change in um, oil. All right. Well, guys, there goes another 30 minutes already. And I think we're going to call it a week here at the Parkzilla studio. I'm tired. This one behind me, we did, what, eight videos on it this week? So I think, I think it's time for a nap. <laughs> At any rate, I just want to say thank you for coming out and spending a little time with us and especially for shopping with us at Partzilla.com because that makes all of this possible and uh, allows me to come in and have a little bit of fun answering questions for you. Well, once again, we just want to say thank you and God willing, we will see you again next Friday at 3 o'clock. Y'all have a great weekend and a great week. See you.